picking it up. Live in one, two, three, four. Here we go. Ugh, crack that back. All right. Hello again, everyone. We are here tonight, once again, uh, trying to uncover the mysteries of SK Flow. You might recall last time, uh, we spent pretty much the whole time trying to get at these interior weights of a custom SK Flow model. So, for those just joining us, SK Flow is a wrapper around TensorFlow that makes it very easy to use. Um, I followed one of the examples to create a convolutional neural net, pretty simple thing. Uh, to do the MNIST digit classification problem. Uh, the problem is you can't easily get at the weights for the convolutional layers. It is possible to get the weights for the final, the like readout layer where you're actually uh, doing the logistic regression because you can say get tensor value on your classifier logistic regression slash weights colon zero. I mean that's clearly the most obvious thing uh, that anyone would have thought of. So I don't know why, uh, I don't know why no one would have thought of that before. However, to get, uh, say, a layer higher, you've got to do this DNN slash layer zero slash linear slash matrix, and that gets you the weights going into the fully connected layer, which is still good to know. Uh, so that's sort of this line uh, that that's what that represents. But I'd like to get the weights going into the convolution. Ideally, I want to get the weights going into the first layer of the convolution so I can look at those those values and see what they're really doing. Even if this model is junk, I want to see what those features are supposed to be and verify that, oh yes, they're edge detectors or they're hole detectors or something silly like that. Um, I have just posted to the the Gitter.im skflow chat room. So if you're looking at, I'll post it in the, the chat. That's the easiest thing to do. Uh, if you happen to know the answer, either tell me in the chat here or tell me in the chat there. Um, I looks like people are pretty active in there, so I'm hopeful that someone will will pop by. And just now, I was screwing around. Uh, more with this. So basically you define this convolutional model and that's what you pass into your your TensorFlow estimator which is what SKFlow is using and that's where you build up your custom custom code. But it's not clear how to extract the things that you want from there. And just before the start of the video I was poking around in classifier which is the object that TensorFlow estimator returns dot model function, which is actually this actual function, um, dot globals, which is like a Python, you can inspect whatever globals are part of this, uh, this variable, and you get some weird, interesting things going on in there. For example, you get this big array, the W array. Why is there a W array? I don't know. I don't think I define, like, I don't find anything as W in here. I define a W is down here. Oh, that's probably why there's a W array, because I said W equals this thing, and W1 equals this thing. So I bet, so this is how you extract the final regression. And you can look at that if you've properly imported matplotlib, and then plot that ion like you do. So you can look at the final layer weights, and that's not particularly informative. This is just extra. That's not actually part of the weights. It stops at 64 here. Uh, and if you make W1, I bet if I look at new things here, and I say A dot keys, so look at the globals that are part of this classifier, I bet W1 is now in that list, and I don't think it was before. But there's all kinds of stuff here. I just don't know what, what, uh, which one of those may or may not have what I want. I suspect maybe those are just all my globals. Actually, hang on, I might be misinterpreting Python. 
I say b equals 4, and then I say a equals whatever. A dot keys and is B in that list. I bet it is. Da, 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 da. B in effect. It's weirdly enough, it gives me the name of the variable. Yeah, so that's not that's just general globals that I have that are not part of that particular convolutional model. So what else do we got here? I mean, this is a function. I'm not sure what things should be part of the function and shouldn't. You would think it'd be part of the model function, but model function contains no, no attributes. I'm hitting tab right now, nothing. Only these uh, like private methods, which are just part of the things that come with a class. Um, for example, code. Code object at whatever, whatever. Dot, you can grab onto the uh, the actual code of your function as sort of a compiled thing. Uh, the number of locals. There's eight locals. Fantastic. That's if it could like actually give me the locals, that might be helpful. Bar names. Again, that's just not not that helpful here. We need to figure out. What is the proper proper magic incantation, essentially, at this stage? Uh, but if we can't figure that out, uh, I'm going to give it maybe, maybe 30 minutes I'm going to fight with this more. If that doesn't work out, I might switch and, like, just start learning a new library. I might try to learn Keras in 30 minutes. Uh, I have a feeling that's not going to be all that complicated and it may work a little better than this. Uh, I really want to like SK Flow, it does a lot of nice things. But if it's not in the process of, uh, if it's not gonna, if I can't actually access the weights, then why, I don't think I can use that. Fully understanding that it is intended as an educational tool uh, to transition people to TensorFlow proper. However, it seems like there's a way to do it with this, uh, but it's not clear how one actually does that. Dot get get params, but that's that doesn't give you the actual uh, parameters that you want. You can get tensor, but you need a name. For example, DNN. Yeah. Slash layer zero slash linear slash matrix colon zero well yeah that's that's for sure a tensor and uh, you can do cool things with that e dot graph dot as default add to device finalize get collection get operations no that doesn't help Woo, that's not what I wanted. Right, because I was in here and I did the search for DNN slash, or maybe just DNN even, in this repository. And you do see, where do they fiddle with this? Or did I search for get tensor value? That might have been what I searched for. Get tensor, let's just search for that. Yeah, get tensor, get tensor name. Isn't that cute? Oh, so this is really part of, uh, we believe this is part of the TensorFlow API itself, and just SKFlow is sort of uh, exposing that. And last time I wanted to use TensorBoard to try to recover this. However, TensorBoard doesn't work with uh, TensorFlow 0.6 and Python 3, so I said, aha, I'll perfect time to install TensorFlow 0.7. Uh, that didn't work either. They uh, they released a wheel, which is the pip install method for an arbitrary version of Python 3, but it didn't actually work in Python 3.5. And I was looking at the issue, and it just it just looks like there's really a dependency hell going on between certain libraries that are provided versus not provided. It's a kind of thing where if you're 
if you're not on the most recent version of Ubuntu, you're sort of out of luck. That's, that's what it seems like anyway, which I kind of get because, you know, there's just not that much, not that much available, or Ubuntu is very popular if you're going to provide for a particular, a, uh, a particular distro, then Ubuntu is the one to go. Uh, let's search git tensor. Where can I search the API? Is that not a thing I can do? Let me just tensor flow git tensor. Basic usage, yada yada yada. Did I mention I wanted the git tensor in there? Seems like they forgot that part. Got the SK flow business. Do matrix by tensor multiply. Can't get it working, can't get it working. More SK flow. Unable to get it working. Get tensor value. Get tensor binding. I think it's called. No, get tensor value. I lied. Maybe if I put some quotes around this, it will actually give me get tensor. Yes, that helps. Important things when doing Google searches. If you really want what's under the quotes, you got to put it in quotes. Of course, my YouTube page is then <laughs> currently listed there. Cost of our name. All right, what about this? This is somebody's doing something with it. This is just TensorFlow in general. Get Tensor. Cost of our name. What is cost of our name? Self dot cost of our name equals cost of our name, which is cost colon zero. Like there's something about what things are supposed to be named that I'm clearly not privy to here. And it'd be nice if these things were just listed out and then I could poke around and I could find the right, right object here. You might think class weight is what we want, but it's not. Dot predict. Is it somewhere inside predict maybe? Predict class or regression for x. Dot, no, that's not going to be what we want. Like these weights exist. They've been trained. Uh, how to get at them is the question. Because you can say get tensor. Get tensor value. All right, so I'm going to fiddle around. And you can say conv layer one, for example. Colon layer zero. No. Yeah. No, slash. Slash layer zero slash linear slash matrix zero. This is something you can try. It'll yell at you and say, that's, that's not a thing refers to a tensor which does not exist, but there's no way to tell what tensors exist in your graph. If I get my hands on the actual computation graph, maybe, but whatever, whatever dot graph, not one of the options, and model function itself is a function. So that doesn't actually work. It's like I need to get inside this particular function, this instance of this function. Restore, save, what does restore do? Path to the checkpoints and other model information. Oh, that's restore old information. That's not what we want. Didn't think so. What does it say about get params? Get parameters for this estimator. No, that's a, that's a lie. Those are not all the parameters. Those are just a handful of sort of useful parameters. Not really what we're looking for. Optimizer? Like, does that make sense? Set params? No. Max to keep? So this is, uh, this is the frustration here. Keep my eye on the Gitter Hub chat. Probably I'll forget about that after today. What about dot fit? 
that that do anything? No. No, 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 no. Uh, oh, I did actually print something to the logger. So let me look at that. Um, so I do have a logger here for TensorBoard, even though I'm not going to actually use TensorBoard because it doesn't work. Um, what does it look like? Oh, boy. So this is a very binary format here that I'm not, not terribly familiar with. Uh, actually, let's see, logistic regression dot weights. I might, however, have an idea. I'm going to strings on this, and we're going to look at the end. Uh, we're going to look at the last 50 strings. Okay, this is actually, this is maybe a good start. You know what? We're just gonna pipe it into less. We're gonna look at everything. There we go. There's all this logistic regression dot whatever stuff, which I'm sure could be pulled out through this. So we're just gonna go through the actual logger and hope that it has some information like that. Like, does it have conv? Conv layer two slash convolution slash filters. This might be a winner. Should not be this this complicated to pull this stuff out though. Classifier dot get tensor value con layer two sure slash convolution slash filters. What if I do that? Is this a thing? Bam! Look at that. Look at that. We have a. Uh, we have unlocked the magic. We are sorcerers. Welcome. Welcome to the Welcome to the show, everybody. Alright. W2 equals classifier.get tensor value of whatever that garbage I just typed was. I mean this is this is the most natural thing you would do, right? Um, I'm gonna have to actually fiddle with that, but so this isn't the first layer. That's the I'm doing my weights in sort of reverse order, and I'm willing to bet conv layer one is gonna be that. W three is this is the actual array, I believe. Five five one thirty two, which would be the weights associated with this layer. I'm pretty sure. Uh, we should probably pull out the, I don't know if the bias is included with that. I'm not too worried about it right now. This means we can actually have an interesting show today. Fantastic, fantastic. Life is good, life is good. All right, what do we got, what do we actually, I gotta remember how to, how to plot these things now. So this is, we're making subplots. And I want W3, all right, yes. And these weights are already in a fantastic shape. So it's just a matter of, I want four rows, eight columns. And I want all those, all those, that guy, and Let's see here. Yank this out of there, put it over there. These are already in the right shape. Uh, doing that. Uh, let's see what happens when we just do that without, you know, thinking about it at all. See if he yells at me. Oh yeah, he yells at me. Okay, hang on. Did something wrong there. Uh, not YY times 8. No, no. Yes? No? Did this the other way around? 8, 4. Try that. That's a little better. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, of course, this model is garbage right now. Uh, so it's actually predicting next to nothing good. We can look at the actual, uh, 
What was the accuracy we computed earlier? Score, not even defined. That's how bad it is, not even defined. Oh, have I actually fit this model? I might not have. I might be a, a lying person, a person who is a liar. That, that might be what I am. All right, we're gonna let that crank for a little bit. Not, not a, forever, I'm not gonna let it run to completion. Uh, but that's excellent, that, that's so good. That is, that is exactly what I needed. All right, so the magic, that's the magic we needed. Conflare one, that, that I can buy into because I, we did this with namespace, variable scope, conflare one. Uh, slash convolution, it is a ops.conv2d. There's no way to sort that out. And filters, filters is one of the common names. Uh, for the features you pull out of a convolution. And zero, of course, because it's the first thing. Uh, one might give us the biases. I don't know. I'm not too worried about that right now. That's not a big deal. Just getting this to work at all is, frankly, a, uh, a miracle, to be honest. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna type this real quick over to the the Getter Hub. Uh, let's see. Conv. Make sure I go down there and see this. I'm using another computer to type this, of course. So, let's see how many typos I can introduce. It's this. Shown in the examples. Or ready to expose. There we go. All right, so it's going. It's getting better. I'm sure it's still not very good. That's fine. I don't care. I'll have to I'll have to use this strings trick again sometime. I'm sure. But that's that's good to know. If I do a little logging, I can figure out what the heck it actually is. Actually, I wonder if by looking into the logging, I can so looking into what the logging does. I can more directly see what it's trying to do. All right, that's good enough. Metrics is not defined. What do you mean metrics is not? Oh, what is metrics? What is metrics supposed to be? Oh, I never actually imported metrics. What do you know? That explains a lot. Hey, there we go. That's our actual score. Takes a little time. Goes over the whole test set. Da -da 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 Perfect. Uh, 69%, which is pretty awful. Just in case anyone wanted to know, that's pretty bad. Pretty, pretty bad. Oh, I'm gonna do that. Well, let's have a look see at our features now. Now that it had a little bit more time to properly train. Hey, you know. I don't find these features so illuminating. When I was doing it with uh, Theano, I remembered I had some pretty good features here. Uh, this model's pretty much garbage, though. Uh, you can see like, oh, maybe it's trying to do something here, maybe it's trying to do something here. I don't know. I don't see anything in these features. Uh, is there something dumb we're doing in this model? Like, does it just not have enough? Oh, we don't have very many, uh, very many final nodes. That could be part of it. In the original TensorFlow uh, example where they do a convolutional neural net, They've got like uh, 1,024 uh, nodes in the final layer here. So updating that might help, but that doesn't matter. That's not what I want to look at. What I want to look at now is can I take these these features from this final, from, or the top level, from the first convolutional layer, as it has clearly been constructed here, and take that up to the next layer and see what happens. So in all these uh, machine learning talks when they do convolutional stuff, 
they show you the first layer of weights and then they show you an image of the second layer but it's based on combinations of the first layer so that's really what I want to see so I want to see so like what larger image are we are we building up here so you want to look at like a particular neuron in the uh, is that right a particular neuron in the second layer yeah what does it combine so what is that actually looking for so I think what I want to do is combine well let me think about this yeah it takes features from the first layer uh, of those 32 features I, I gotta think about this real careful now it takes those 32 channels on a given layer and those are my pictures here let me bring that up it gets to see this kind of stuff right no these are the features that get banged against my image and what the next layer gets to see is the max pool of these kind of features if that's I'm gonna make sure that's I understand that right all right so it's not just it is not the case that the next convolutional layer is just combinations of these things. I don't think. Maybe that is technically true. But it's combinations of those things and in different places. I believe what those, uh, those typical uh, presentations are doing. Let me see if I can find one real quick. Let's see if we can say convolutional neural net uh, scifar. Uh, you know what? Yeah, that's deep CNN. That might not be what we want. This is a scifar image recognition uh, tutorial, which we have actually haven't gone through in this in this series, but I'm sure we will at some point. Da -da 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 -da. They don't actually go into it at all. Did they talk about Cypher, Cypher 1000? Or ImageNet or whatever? ImageNet. I really don't necessarily want a scholarly. Just uh, want to see one or two images here. Da -da -da. That's loading. This is the actual paper. Never thought we'd be looking at a paper in a video, did you? So this is sort of like the first layer weights, right? Or like they call them the kernels. So you get a lot of these edge detector kind of things in a properly trained network. But they don't have, okay, that one doesn't have the like the next layer build up. Da, da, da. Again, a whole bunch of images, bunch of images. But they show that same first layer, just so I can show you guys what the heck I'm talking about, they're going to do overfitting, you do dropout, oh we didn't do dropout in this maybe that's part of the problem in this network we have overfit some things, here's those that exact same image on the first layer features and they don't talk about it, alright that's a bummer alright we'll spend a few more seconds look at this, look at Google's entry and then that's that's gonna be it shouldn't be too too bad oh this is just just this stuff right here what else we got ah, I hate having to just the, this exact same image it's a very popular uh, image right there but there's no one here has the the next layer I swear I've seen this ah, that's frustrating all right never mind all right well anyway I'd like to build up what those features look like, those second layer features based on the input uh, features. And so you've got all these edge detectors, those get combined in various ways in various places, and that gives you like a, starts to give you like a face or a wheel or something like that. That's what I want to visualize. Actually, maybe convolutional neural net 
Visualize inner layer. Understanding neural nets. Deep viz visualizing convolutional neural nets. Hey, maybe that's what we want. Maybe we should use their library. They've got a paper on it too. Oh boy. Oh geez, this is like a whole web page built in thing. I don't need that. Again, those are early features, early features. Oh yeah, here's some more, some deeper convolutions, but that's just again, that just looks like overall weights. Hmm. Uh, this is someone having fun with like Google Deep Dream here, which we did some deep dreaming uh, a few videos ago. Da, 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 da. Cliff dwelling, gorilla, ostrich, goose. No, that's just just not quite what we're looking for. Ah, here we go. Here's some layer stuff. For any neuron, no, that's maximizing a particular neuron and seeing what you get. I believe. Maybe not. Your example images from all layers of network similar to the famous AlexNet, Kresnev et al. Yeah, I think that's what that is. It's maximizing particular layers. Arg. Dog face plus flower, human face plus cat face. Cat face. All right, oh well. So here's what I want to try. Let me let me do this same thing essentially, uh, but let me do it for the inner layer weights, the ne the next layer of uh, convolutions here. Uh, there's just one catch that has 32 input channels, whereas this, the outer layer weights, just had one input channel because it's a grayscale image. So, if we just look at the zeros, and it's how many? I said it had 64 filters. So it's going to be an 8 by 8 thing. So it outputs 64 features. W2, W2.shape. Yeah, 32 inputs because it reads those input features differently. So if you look at, say, the first, how it handles the first input feature, you get all these. However, there's going to be a set of 32 of these guys, for example. Uh, actually, why don't I? 32, 64, That's fine. What is this? This is which feature we're on? And this is just. I think that's right. Oh, that's going to be 64 rows and 32 columns of features. I want that the other way around, actually. Oh, not that. XX. There we go. No. Sorry about this. Going a little bonkers here. This is plotting a whole bunch of stuff. It might crash my machine, which would be real bad. Uh, but it happens. Loading, loading, loading. You'd think with this intense graphics card that I'm not using with SK Flow. I could render render all these pixels a little more quickly. You would think. You would think. You'd be wrong. You would be oh so wrong. Still rendering, still rendering. Oh my goodness. How uh how awful is that?
Give this a few more seconds and then I'm just going to tell it to quit. This is uh, a little bit ridiculous. Not the kind of thing that uh, I want to wait forever on. And okay, that's enough out of you. Yeah, that's cute. Okay. Uh, that's our old image. We're not worried about that. Okay. So just to give you a flavor, uh, first convolutional layer weights gives you an idea of the kinds of things that it's sort of going through. And that, of course, is the second convolutional layer there, whose weights are not particularly illuminating in this instance. So the question is, how do you combine these lower layer weights uh, into something interesting? Like the partial face image, or what I'm hoping to like maybe see some circles or something like that. Um, Let me just let me just start sketching this out since that's the only way I can think. Yeah, whatever, that's fine. So got this first convolutional layer. And what do I end up with after after all is said and done? I've got a 28 by 28 image. I do these five by five grids on it. Uh, that and I'm doing. Da, 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 da. Oh, that's terrible. Why is that? Oh, oh. Pixel. Yeah, there we go. There. No, that's still no good. What is this? Pressure dynamics. Oh, no, I want, I want none of that. Basic dynamics. Ugh. I don't want the paintbrush. I want the pencil. That's that's what I want. Forgive me for my poor paint skills here. There we go. It's like that. Uh, I've got this 5x5. Five five. God damn it. Basic simple. There we go. Much better. Got a nice 5x5 five five grid that I'm working with. Extend that a little bit. Choo, 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 right there. Okay. Got my 5x5 five five grid. I drag that along my 28x28. 28 28. I believe I have padding is same, which let's just look up so we know what we're doing when we do that. Da, 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 da. Conv model. Oh, this is actually SK, SK Flow Ops. SKFlow.ops.conv2D. Let's look that up. Of course not. Of course not. Because it's in ops. There we go. Apologize if I'm getting uh, frustrated here. SK Flow is. Uh, it's working well today, but that's not necessarily true. Type of padding that the algorithm is to use. So if I say tf.nn.maxpool, for example, padding algorithm, I just want to double check what it does for its padding algorithm. <laughs> so let's look that up here. Convolution and pooling. Uh, let's look that up real quick. TensorFlow convolution padding. Padding type definition is this swapped in the documentation. That's not so good. For details about the padding calculation. Padding. TF.pad. That'll probably tell us. Pads input with zeros according to paddings you specify, yada yada yada. Uh, it doesn't actually tell us what we want to know there. Padding. Padding. Paddings, 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 paddings. String from same comma valid. 
the type of padding algorithm to use. You know, it's like you're really, really evasive. Same, round down, only full size. See, this is like important information that should have been easier to find. Definitely need, the padding definition, documentation really needs modification. Well, it's getting there. Yeah, it's getting there, it's getting there. So, same means partial windows are included. Valid means only include those things, those windows that are already fully contained. So you're going to end up throwing out some data, which is OK. Uh, different, different things work in different situations. Uh, so same says pad it out with zeros. Valid says don't do that. Don't, don't, just don't do that. And what's the default here? Looks like same is the default. So pad with zeros. Let me just double check that one more time. I'm not going crazy. Partial windows are included. So pad out with zeros, yes. One of those things. All right, so we've got, we are padding everything out with extra stuff. So we got our five by five grid is dragged along our 28 by 28 image. So we'll end up with 28 plus five uh, minus the one. So we'll have our last window will be, uh, our last window on the right will be something like this, where this is all zeros. And we'll just have this. And so we'll end up with, as I say, 28 plus 5 minus 1, so 32. So we'll have a 32 by 32 image when we're all done. With the first convolution, we're going to do max pooling, which will get us down to 16 by 16. And that is what our next convolutional layer gets to see. So it should be computing things on 16 by 16 by 32, because we happen to have that many output features of the first layer. This 32 and that 32 not necessarily connected. Let me do it in a different, eh, too late, I already colored it. So really when I'm plotting my second my second layer, uh, w2.eval, w2.shape is right. But I'm looking at 5 by 5 sub-images of this 16 by 16 baloney. So maybe what I should be doing is I should pick an image, whichever one, and shove it through the first convolution and max pooling layer and then look at it and then look at this 16 by 16 by 32 thing and that would tell me what features have made it through potentially but then again uh, these are just some numbers and these numbers rep sort of represent uh, how strong certain features are so that's interesting I have, to, I have to think a little bit more about this. Hmm. Okay. Well, if nothing else, I discovered how to get those interior hidden weights uh, for this, this specific model anyway, and could use strings again on the old uh, logger to find out more information. I don't recommend that, and there really ought to be a simpler way to do that, but it is what it is. Da, 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 da. Why 64 am I saying here? Alright, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me just... W2 of everything of everything. Let me see. I just want to look at one output channel, say. But all the input channels. 
with one single output channel. Alright, this is what we're going to do. I just want one output channel, I don't care which one, so we're going to look at one feature, uh, but how it handles the various 32 input features. Uh, that'll be, that will be interesting. Da, 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 da. Not nearly as many here. We're looking at, was it four and eight? Eight and four, whatever. Eight count four. And it'll be yy times eight. Plus xx, as usual. So we're only looking at a single layer two feature here. Remember, these, these are how it handles the input 32 features on this 5x5 five five grid of that 16x16 16 16 max pooling output. This is all terribly complicated to keep in your head at once. I wouldn't, I may just like roll up a giant whiteboard here or a, or chalkboard or whatever and mark everything on there to try to keep it all straight. Uh, in fact, why don't we make another new image here? So this is sort of first layer. This is sort of second layer. And let's use a different color so we don't go bonkers. I'll tell you what, now let's start with. Let's start with red, actually. So we've got this 16 by 16 baloney. Got a lot of things in there. Yada, 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 yada. Mouse art is wonderful. Let's throw one more in there. And again. This isn't actually 16 by 6, 16. Doesn't look that way, but it, it should be. Whatever. And I've got, oh, hang on. And I've got 32 of those. So it's like I have 32 little, Im little images, little channels to go along with this. And I'm looking at just a small subsection first. Small 5x5 five five subsection. So I guess if I could get what the activations are for this layer, or even for after the pooling, each one of my Oh, brain, 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 brain. I have to, doing this live is now a particular challenge of, this is something I probably should have worked out ahead of time. But I was just trying to get the weights ahead of time, so that's where I'm at. What if I take a given image, punch it into the layer, see what happens? Kind of like that idea. Is there a classifier? I don't really want dot predict. I mean, I do want predict, but I don't necessarily want predict. Uh, this is where it'd be nice to just be in TensorFlow, in TensorFlow proper, because I could use the feed dict to input whatever value I wanted for things at certain places and I could get out the actual activations uh, for, a given, for a given image pretty easily by using the feed dick and the fetches to get what I need. It's not clear that you can do that here though, because here it, like, it sort of handles the session for you and everything, or does it? I made a session, da, 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 didn't I? You know, you don't. It makes the session for you. So that's, uh, that's dangerous. Is there a classifier like dot session dot uh, get tensor value now see because now I don't even want to get a tensor value now I want to predict but I want to get some intermediate values can I do that is that a thing that I can get my hands on I mean predict a prob a That'll give you the prop 
abilities, but it won't give you the actual interior values, which is a bummer. But, uh, I mean, that's the way it goes, right? Let me just try. Uh, images, mnist, tf, uh, dot train, dot images, zero. Right, and uh, let's just take a look at that just so we can verify to ourselves what that is. I didn't actually want to plot it, I wanted to p-color it, of course. Uh, well, that's not going to work. Yeah. I want the first guy, well, I have to remind myself what the shape is. Oh, interesting. Okay. So dot reshape uh, 28 comma 28. There we go. That should be everything we need. And there's still this giant figure up that it's trying to plot things on. There we go. So that's a three. Let's flip up down. Uh, I, you know, that could be a seven too. Who knows? Who can say? Who can really say? Let's look at another one that's a little more clear. All right, that's hundred percent. That's a three. Boom. That first one is probably a seven. Uh, this is a three, pretty clearly. So I want to activate this, activate the neurons with this guy. So to do that, I'm just gonna run, I'm gonna run the prediction uh, based on this mnisttf.train.images1. I think that's all I gotta do here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Can I feed whatever shape? But, uh, of course not. One to two. Because it's expecting a batch. Um, so it predicted three. Great, the model does a wonderful job. That's not really what I cared about. I want to like get tensor value. So I want to get the tensor value of the activated of the activated neuron there. Uh, and see what I can pull out of that. Let's try to do that. Uh, no, that's right. Da, da, da. So let's see if we can run strings again and guess what the right thing here is. So there's all this convolution fair filters, initializer. We want to look for something uh, that would give us the output if we evaluated if we got this as like output or something or ideally this h pool one is output that would be great that would be real great so that we don't have to run the uh, the convolution again ourselves that's not something we want to have to do here conv one filter convolution bias filters conv duty and there's the bias too that's right max pool does that get something that we want, maybe? Conv layer one slash max, ooh. Max pool? Is that what we want, is the question. Is that a thing that we can grab? Result returned with an error set, interesting. Oh, that was worth a try there. Well, then it goes into convolution layer two. Strides, padding, strings, maybe not the most, uh, not the most robust solution here. Uh, but it's a, it's a start, it's a start. Because a lot of uh, raw, pure information. UCU DNN, 
on GPU. Well, that's interesting. Didn't think that GPU was actually working here. Filters slash read, filters, filters, filters. I don't want the filters now. I want the the activated neuron value. This is what I want. I can search neuron, I can search node, I can search acted. No, nothing. All right, that might be as far as we get tonight, which uh, honestly, I did not expect to recover anything here. I was 100% 100 fully expecting to just spend 30 to 40 minutes fighting with this and getting nowhere. So that we have it all recovered, the convolutional weights is in fact a victory, and that makes, that makes SKFlow a usable tool. And I'm sure... I'm sure there's a way I can fight with this to get what I want. Um, for example, I could specify in TensorFlow using these exact weights now and no longer making them uh, actual variables, just making them like placeholder values, placeholder values and I'm going to substitute in the weights. Oh well. And then I can activate the neurons and get the, the output I want. All right, but tonight we were able to use TensorFlow's SK flow to get the weights that we wanted to get. That is, that's what the mission was. We succeeded. SK flow. I still like it. It's still really nice. Uh, but when you want to do sweet visualizations, uh, you need access to those underlying tools, and so it's not always, not always obvious how to do that. And I'm, I'm hopeful that in the future releases they'll make that a little more. Clear, even if they just provided examples on how to do that. Uh, probably I'm going to take a break from SK Flow uh, since we've had about three weeks on it. I don't know what I'll, I'll work on next week. Uh, I'm thinking of taking a look at Keras as another uh, high level library. It uses either TensorFlow or Theano as a backend and is sort of agnostic about that. Uh, so if you're using TensorFlow at home, uh, you can use Keras and it'll be great. If you're using Theano at home, you can do the same thing and it'll also be great. You sort of don't have to worry about that. And so for like if Theano only works in your machine, use Keras. You can still talk to someone else who's using TensorFlow. Um, and the week after that, I will actually be out taking a break. Uh, so I hope tonight was useful for everyone and we actually learned something. This is totally new. Uh, the internet could not tell me how to do this. So that's super great. Uh, you guys have a great night. Keep, uh, keep learning.